Okay. I'm so I started recording. Do you want to start yours? Okay. Let me mop my sweat. Let me mop your sweat. Let me see your. Okay, good. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. So okay. I should begin, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't. Okay. Right. No. Well. <laughs> Okay, what is up, beautiful people? Welcome once again to H and Clothing's. Welcome to another wonderful video, guys. We have blown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have blown seriously. Amen. Amen on your behalf. <laughs> Amen on your Can behalf. Can you imagine the delectable, the classic? The timeless. I don't even know what to call <laughs> again. <laughs> Kim James is here. That's <laughs> so amazing. Thank you for having me. Thank yes. you so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you for coming all the way here, yeah. traveling, and um, allowing me to, you know, be part of your community. Oh, like it's just it's a privilege to me, sir. <laughs> Oh, like, uh, my, my pleasure. I'm so I'm so thankful. Uh, I can't wait to hear what your questions are. I tried not to read them. Oh, okay. Because I sent them. I tried wait, not to read them. Wait. So I want to be surprised. So I can give like honest, yes, honest answers. Yes, yes. Mm, mm. Thank you so much. Okay, so please introduce yourself. We know how already, but I'm sure we still need to hear. We still need to hear from you, oh. please. Okay. Um, hi everyone. My name is Priscilla Ogban and I am a fashion designer and my YouTube channel is called King Dave. I create women's wear, like fashion, sewing, pattern making content. I also, I am releasing a series about my trip to Nigeria, which is where I met the beautiful H&M clothing. We went to Balogo Market together. I think this, that video should be up. Or just about to be up by the time you guys see this interview. But anyways, um, thank you for having me. Thank you too. For I'm so I'm so I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. So <laughs> let's get right into the business of the day. See, yes. yeah, I'm so eager. Um, I came ready. Okay. In fact, the list of questions <laughs> like, do you want to ask us twelve? Well? But don't worry, I'll, I'll answer as much as I can. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so let's begin. First mm -hmm. things first. Mm -hmm. um, a number of us here, I guess some of us are new meeting you. Mm -hmm. So please, can you just um, let us know how did this journey begin for you? Just give us a brief Have I walking brief down history? the lane. Yeah. Yes. Um, so for me, I... I think my first like interaction with fashion was when I was in University of Benin. Then I was studying microbiology and I just liked to like style myself in a like classy way that was modest. I think that was what made my style very like noticeable amongst my peers. And um, I just like to look good, I guess. So from dressing up and styling looks, after I finished that degree and doing my NYSC, I decided to go study fashion at Matt Wayne in Surilere. So I did like a short course for like a few weeks or like a couple of months mm -hmm. there. And after that, I just realized there was so much more I wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. It was my first time like making a pattern. I think I made my first like pencil skirt there. You know, once you just start something, I know, okay, this is something I really want to learn and find out more about. So I did that course. From doing that, I realized like my, my appetite for fashion was growing. And I discussed it with my parents. They weren't really pleased at first. They were more like, oh, why, why, why fashion? Don't you want to cut? Do, what do you want to go, um, become a doctor? Because the plan was to do microbiology, study medicine, oh, but wow. life, life kind of just happened. Yeah. Um, so they were, thank, they were grateful. They're graceful enough to fund my degree in the UK. So thank you, mom and dad. Yeah, thank you, mom and dad, if you're watching this, like, because I don't know how I'd have gone through all of this so i went to the uk for like my diploma program after doing that i did my bsc in fashion design and i think i started my youtube channel somewhere along the studying process and i started that channel and i didn't realize the potential and the growth and the trajectory to take me on but i'm just grateful that i got to connect with people that believed in me and saw the potential in me and encouraged me to keep doing what i'm doing now and it was like my, my friend back then in fashion school that she told me why don't you just share what you're doing like you know mm -hmm. fashion and design that was like the main reason why i started my youtube and i guess the beginning of 
what I'm doing right now. Hey. Mm. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Thank you. So there was a lot I really picked from there that I didn't know prior to now. So I'm glad that Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess we're learning more about each other <laughs> yes, today. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Amazing. Okay, so you said you went to fashion school. You did some kind of like a little course here before moving over and then went in depth into it. Mm. As a young lady or a young guy that went to fashion school anywhere, what you think after going to fashion school is to start up your own, your own business. business. Yeah. So what advice will you give someone like that has gone to fashion school, has learned all these things? What would you say, oh, this is what you need to make that business successful and mm. thrive and grow and mm. make substantial something for Because you? most people always like, a lot of people that I've met that have gone to fashion school want to start their own lines. But I always tell people that if you don't really have an idea of the kind of business you want to do or improve on like skills that you lack especially like the business side of things that you don't get taught in school mm -hmm. i always advise people to do internships like it's the first thing i would say without even like thinking too much because when you work with a brand that's already established whether it's a small brand or a bigger brand you get to really see what it takes to run a fashion business you see the ins and outs what it takes to make a collection if it's ready to wear you get to understand like dealing with clients sourcing fabrics finances there are a lot of things that goes mm -hmm. into running a, wow. a fashion business that you wouldn't really learn in school until you get into the industry so if you can do an internship if you can do in like a, a small brand where you see the whole process and in a bigger brand where you can see how they outsource things i think it will be very useful mm -hmm. knowledge for mm -hmm. you before diving in to start yours yeah so please do internships if you can even if it's not paid it's such useful knowledge that i think you would be grateful for once you have it mm. i think well spoken no well spoken it's not about money so that no. means it's not about having the capital and saying I oh say, i have the money to start no because i've seen people who had money started businesses and failed mm. because they didn't know how to manage the money and they didn't know where to invest the money in like that is something that can happen so you can secure a capital a grant you can get an investor but if you don't have the knowledge or the skill set to actually like run a business yeah that business will not true. it won't last very long true, yeah true, true. so you had it first on here <laughs> <laughs> you had it first oh, yeah oh my goodness moving on um mm. everyone talks about branding you know we go to fashion school we learn oh pencil skirts pleated skirts circle skirts and mm. all of these things mm. like still the same things almost everyone is being taught so how do you come out and then stand apart from everyone else the crowd mm. yes what Ooh. is branding how do you <sighs> That like, is, it's like really? that that word everybody has like a, a different definition and probably the way I would even define it some people say oh it's not the way we know it mm. but I say branding is kind of what a customer experiences when they either watch your video or use your product or encounter your brand how does it make them feel mm. um, what kind of um, what's the word do they feel empowered do they feel inspired like there's a collection of things that you have to create to help your customer experience that so let me use um kim day for example let me use my youtube channel mm -hmm. um i do fashion design you do fashion design there are a lot of other amazing talented designers that do the same content mm -hmm. as me but a few different things that i have tried to do from different videos to ensure people have a similar brand experience is the tone of voice I use. I try to come across as warm, friendly, and welcoming, so that encourages people to stick around. I try to keep a setting look that, like, so I keep my makeup minimal, so I seem more approachable and friendly. Why are you smiling? Yeah. No, I feel like all these things kind of add up to create a persona that is, is that becomes more than me. That is not just Priscilla. That now becomes like the Kim Dave brand per se. And then I try to incorporate like my heritage. I'm Nigerian, so I try to use Ankara prints as much as possible. Even when I do collections for my own brands, I try to tell those stories through the clothes and through the collections. The colors I use in terms of like my channel art, the kind of fonts I use when I make my thumbnails. 
everything kind of has to connect together to create that warm, friendly, approachable mm -hmm. persona that mm -hmm. the Kim Day brand has. I don't know if this makes sense, but if you've watched a few of my videos, that's something that people would yeah, say. True, true, very But very it's not true. just one thing, it's a collection of different mm -hmm. things. So I say, I'll define branding as um, the different aspects of things that you do to ensure that your customer has a unique experience with your business or your brand so if it's clothing if it's content creation if it's cooking it's i, I say it's a few different things that you sort of have to like put in place mm -hmm. and for me i it took me a while to figure out what works for me because i wanted the brand to be sort of true to who i am and to attract the right audience and the right community so maybe I don't have the right definition. Maybe you have to Google this one, but that's how I understand branding, and yeah. that's how I've been able to like apply it for what I do. So that means we need to be intentional very, about very. those little things. Honestly, like, it all adds up. Mm -hmm. Like the way you dress, the color of hair you make, mm -hmm. the fonts you use, the music you add on wow. top of your video, um, the the kind of channel art you make, the intros, how you introduce your videos. Everything kind of like connects together to create a unique experience oh, wow. that your audience will have on your channel or with your brand. All right. So, um, as an entrepreneur, because right now you're an entrepreneur, you're not just a YouTuber. You have many caps on. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. Thank you. Lord. Yes, please. So, we we'll want to know how you're able to juggle around all of these mm. things. Mm. Also, you could also mention those different aspects of all oh, the like, different things I do. Yes. And then how you're able to juggle it mm. seamlessly mm. and still show up in every aspect mm -hmm. that you are involved in. Mm. Yes. Oh, I, I, okay, so I am a fashion designer and from fashion designer, I've been able to elicit or monetize the different aspects of fashion design. So I share like sewing content on YouTube. That is something in, in fashion. I have created an online course sharing like sort of like the beginner side of like making your own clothes, so, like taking your measurements, making basic sewing patterns, uh, making simpler garments. I also am on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Facebook, so I'm able to do like sponsored content. Aren't you on there? We are looking at me it's like, <laughs> like you are on all the platforms I'm on. So the way she's not looking at me like it's, a, it's in, such a big whoa, deal. It's a lot already. <laughs> Okay. So I'm able to like, create sponsorships for brands who maybe they have a machine they want to talk about or fabrics that they're promoting, um, things that are still in line with what I do. Uh, what else do I do? Well, oh, I have an online store and on the online store I sell my own collection. I'm working on a new collection now so I would launch, I'll say end of May, beginning of June. And these are pieces that I used to make them in London, but this new collection is being made in Lagos. So that's exciting. Um, aside clothing, I sell like PDF patterns on the online store um, and digital and digital products. It's a lot too. <laughs> so it's still fashion design, but I just broke down fashion design into different aspects that I could possibly like make a living from. That's 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 kind of what I do. So how do you? How do I juggle everything? Yes. Um, time management and I say I still have a long way to go. I'm grateful for a partner who is able to pace me because mm. I tend to take on a lot of tasks without realizing mm. I'm burning myself thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'll say time management is the biggest thing. I try to plan my, my week in advance at least one week so I know if I need to get fabrics, if I need to hire a photographer, a videographer, I can get all those things prepared and ready. I also like to do a product timeline launch. What this means is mm -hmm. for every quarter I think about all the new products I want to come up with. So uh, at the end of last year I already knew I wanted to do an online course, I knew I wanted to do a collection, I knew I was coming to Lagos so I knew I was planning like a series around that. And that way, I was able to sort of like plan the the time of the year and the season, everything around what I was doing. Oh, wow. So time management is a big, big thing because we only have 24 hours, but it's sort of like how we're able to use it with what we have right now to like maximize the time that we're giving. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. These are gems, oh, guys. Oh, wow. <gasps> wow. You're too kind. I'm just like flattering and washing. <laughs> wow. Hmm, okay. Thank okay. you. Um, last two questions. Mm -hmm. First one, before the last one, okay. is what mistakes have you made or have you encountered on your journey so far? Um, 
there are a lot. I think I've done like a TikTok about this. Let me see if I can oh. remember everything. Because uh, I'm a very emotional person mm -hmm. and I'm not very patient as well. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of my mistakes stem from those qualities that I have. But uh, off the top of my head, I would say I did not separate my finances early enough. So I was making and putting everything inside the same personal account. But I realized that I needed to get to the point where I had to separate like my business expenses from my personal expenses so that I'm able to manage my business expenses and my business income. So I know if I'm making more money or if I'm just losing money. And I pay myself like a salary, even though I'm self-employed. So I technically can just take money from my business, but I've tried to structure it in such a way that my, like all my income goes into a separate account for the business, all my expenses come out of that account and then at the end of the month I pay myself like I'm a staff of the business mm -hmm. and then whatever I want to do my hair, if I want to eat out, like anything I'm doing like outside of the business I do out of that salary mm -hmm. I earn. I mean most times it works, sometimes I still have to go back and touch. dip, yeah touch which I shouldn't really be doing but that's the one thing I would say uh, for the longest time I wasn't doing okay. but I'm glad eventually I've sort of like realized the importance of like separating like my earnings yeah so that I'm just able to like track my revenue especially and manage my expenses too so that's one the second one would be setting boundaries mm -hmm. um, I am like what you call a people pleaser so I like to you know just try and make people in my life happy go above and beyond even sometimes to the detriment of my own peace and mm -hmm. happiness without even realizing it and the thing with social media is you kind of put yourself online and people have some kind of access that on a normal day they will not have yeah, true. so people can leave comments they can say whatever they want to say without receiving any direct consequences for their words and their actions so I kind of realized it's important to like set healthy boundaries for myself. Okay, this is the time I get off work. Um, I I am not replying to certain rude comments. I'm just deleting because I don't have time for BS. And like I don't know, work hours are work hours because I have like a family and I'm planning to like you know have kids and have that separation. So like boundaries is something that whew, I I mm, definitely need to work on that one. Uh, another mistake would be I tend to like rush sampling so mm -hmm. when I'm making a collection typically I should like sample the design so I can find any mistakes and correct them before doing production but I remember making a collection one time and there was a particular design that I didn't sample Whoa. and I still have those dresses oh, I've not been able to sell those dresses okay. because Crazy. I think the, 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 the half length was too long so it sits wrong on the body mm -hmm. And I could have avoided that if I made a sample. Mm. So my impatience cost that one for wow. sure. And yeah. You had already produced a number of that just oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can mm. imagine. When you sit in that old... Literally just so I don't even know what to do with those dresses. Like I guess I have to figure out something, maybe do an upcycling project or put it up for sale. I don't know. I have to figure out something. So that that that's one yeah, mistake I've made. Old. Yeah. So my impatience, uh has cost me that much money what other mistake have i made mm, not realizing the importance of like um digital products and social media early enough mm. i think i'm slowly coming to grabs with the fact that you kind of need to work smart you don't always need to make like a book or a dress to be able to make money online and uh, that one was my husband that actually kept pushing, oh, you should do wow. PDFs, you should do PDF patterns, you should do ebooks, you should do an online course. But the online course even stemmed, people kept asking me, please do an online course so we can have that to actually go and use if we don't want to go on YouTube. So, yeah, the importance of social media and um, doing like creating that like digital side of like the business because when you have products that you don't physically need to fulfill yourself. It's just like it runs and it manages itself mm -hmm. once you just have it up and running. Great. Mm. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you for spilling all. Huh? Finally, finally, mm -hmm. so we can let you go. <laughs> <laughs> finally, what will you tell your younger self? So like Ooh. you, maybe 10 years, five years, let's say five years back. Let's not go too back. Five years. Uh, or 10 so that years. Was worse. I don't know, just what will you tell yourself? Five years is not long ago. Sure, it's you not know. Long ago, it's right? not in my head because I'm five years was what, 
just like two years before the pandemic because this oh, is like the second or third true. year of, of the pandemic okay, let's go back 10 years 10 years mm. yeah 10 years oh 10 years <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh wow um priscilla hi 10 years from <laughs> 10 years future priscilla talking yeah, yeah future priscilla talking so i was what like 22 oh, so i'm 32 okay. now 22 year old me oh wow gosh geez i'm old <laughs> <laughs> um hello this is future priscilla and um i guess anyone who is around that age group would be able to like hear this and like mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. uh just be yourself and enjoy the process of discovering yourself because at that age there is this like rush and hurry to make a lot of money get married settle down have kids you, there is that hurry to just do all of the goals that you want to do but you have your whole life in front of you like your entire whole life okay. like you realize by the time you turn 30 that why was i in such a hurry to like do all of these True. things and even when you make mistakes, don't beat yourself down too much. It's okay if you don't figure everything out. Um, keep your friends and people that have your back close to you. Mm -hmm. Don't try to cut off your family because you feel like they don't understand you. I say that just like, I don't know, enjoy discovering yourself. I think in a couple of years, you will move to a different country. Aww. You would um, meet the love of your life. Aww. Sweet. You you will start inspiring and is, and empowering people, and if only you could see your future, you would appreciate where you are now. So whatever it is you're dealing with, it's not the end of the world. You you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <sighs> that was so. <laughs> you just spoke to me too. Like, I can just imagine, you know, that confidence that like. Everything will be alright. Everything right. will be fine. Just Honestly, like, relax. yeah. I don't know why we're such in a hurry now. Twenty. Uh, we are. We are. We Gosh. went. Gosh. They still are. As in it, like, it there is this years. like rush yes, to always yes, like, yes. oh, I want to make my first million. Mm -hmm. I want to have my baby. It's mm -hmm. like, sweetie, like, where are you hurrying to? It's like you have, you have your whole life ahead of you. And I think when you now cross thirty, you now realize. <sighs> <laughs> as in, as in I, beg, let I don't it, have let it like, down, calm down. Yes. like I beg I beg I beg there's no oh, rush goodness. it's not like being lazy or mm -hmm. like not taking the things you have for granted mm -hmm. it's just like pacing yourself and taking things one thing at a time sure but that's just how I feel though sure that's oh. how I feel so guys we have come to the end of this video oh, i just want to hug you right oh, now my pleasure thank you for so coming. amazing thank you, thank thank you so you. much for coming this was really she fun she was so she was so like guys let me know what you think in the comments yes. below like i think she was just so down to earth spilled everything <laughs> you're not talking let, like i'm not here not let anything <laughs> I'm right next Guys, to you. <laughs> so amazing. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are Thank you. honored and we will definitely come visit you on your channel. I'm sure we're there already. I'm there already. So you can, you can come if you want there. to. You can come if you want to because I mean it's a similar thing yeah, to me. True, true, yeah, very true. similar content. Thank you once again. You're so welcome. guys. Subscribe if you have not done so already. Yes, and yes, also yes. please check out her page. We made a video. Go and watch that video if you have not seen it mm -hmm. yet. Stay safe. God bless you all. Bye. Bye. <laughs>